Our next speaker, the Honorable Marilyn Musgrave, Vice President of Government Affairs for Susan B. Anthony List. She began her public role in, uh, in her local chapter, Right to Life chapter in Colorado, and went on to serve in the Colorado House and State Senate. In 2002, Marilyn was elected to the United States House of Representatives and served three terms, and during her time in Congress, she was a leading voice for the unborn. She sponsored historic pro-life legislation and served as the very first chairwoman of the Congressional Pro-Life Women's Caucus, and she joins us now. help but think about Howie's comments on Colorado. I am from Colorado. Served from the 4th District of Colorado. And he said that Colorado was schizophrenic. That is so true. <laughs> Let me tell you though, there's some exciting news you may have read about the recalls that have nice. taken place wow. recently. There is another recall in the mix. And this recall is successful of Evie Hudak, would shift the Senate in Colorado, 18 Republicans, 17 Democrats. <laughs> From Colorado, I, I'm telling you, uh, when I served in Colorado, I carried right to work. Uh, I championed concealed carry, woman's right to know. Um, I tell you, I was a taxpayer champion because when I went into the state legislature, I went in because I wanted to make a difference I wanted to be able to look myself in the mirror when it was over and still be Steve's wife, our four kids' mother, and now I've got 11 grandchildren, and I wanted to do something that made a difference. And I feel like I'm in a room today with people that want to make a difference. And I hate to quote Woody Allen because he's despicable, but I think it was him that said, what is it, 90% is just showing up? Let's start showing up in our country. I'm telling you, we have to show up and make a difference. It was the life issue that got me into politics. I was the chairman of my local Right to Life chapter because I feel like, you know, as a human being, you, you try to get these politicians to care about things, and I am a politician, have been. You try to get them to care about veterans and, and private property rights and, and all these things. But if a person who holds an elected position does not care about the most vulnerable human being there is. Why do they care about all the other stuff? The right to life really is a litmus test. I have to tell you, have been in that movement for so many years, and this last summer, everything changed. And it changed because of Kermit Gosnell. Susan B. Anthony List was part, the biggest part of the reason that the national media paid any attention at all. But I'm telling you, I don't think there are any children in the room. When you looked at the images and you saw that little boy, okay, okay, we do have children. When you saw those images, it had to break your heart. It had to shock you. Because since Roe v. Wade, you know, kind of the abortion topic, nobody wants to talk about it anyway. You know, you get the stony faces when you bring it up. And I won't describe the graphic things that, that we saw with the Kermit Gosnell revelation. But it forced the American public to take another look at abortion. You know, maybe many of them don't even know in a certain age group about Roe v. Wade. You know, they, they don't even really know what it meant. But what it meant was an abortion at any time in the pregnancy for any reason. And then you think about Planned Parenthood. You think about all these organizations, you think about these so-called clinics, and you know, as in many things in life, it's always about the money, isn't it? It's always about the money. So here was this so-called clinic where these late-term abortions and all the other horrific things were being done, and the American public were forced to take a look. And you know, Gosnell was not the only one doing this. And Susan B. Anthony List has documented violations in 13 other states where these sorts of hellish activities were going on. I mean, almost unbelievable. And, and the thing of it is, when something like that is revealed, when that curtain is pulled back, it presented a tremendous opportunity for the pro-life movement. And many of us in the pro-life movement, you worked for years and years, and you have to wonder sometimes, have I saved one baby's life? Have I helped one desperate woman? 
And you know, we now are at a place in the pro-life movement with this revelation where we have opportunity for major legislation with the most pro-abortion president ever in office. You know, remember the Infant Born Alive Act when he was a state senator? Remember that in Illinois? He voted against it four times. I mean, at the time at the federal level, even Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and Barbara Boxer f voted for federal legislation as saying that if the infant is born alive, the infant should be saved. That's how pro-abortion, pro-death Barack Obama is. But the good news is that in the state, legislation like the 20-week ban are being passed. I wish I had a woman that was five months pregnant that could stand here before you. You know, when we talk about the 20-week ban, you need to see a woman that's five months pregnant. Now, when I was pregnant with my four children, my husband and I were always excited when we heard the heartbeat for the first time, that faithful little heart beating of our baby. But then, when our first grandchild was going to be born, our son and daughter-in-law said, Mom, you want to come to the ultrasound? So I got to go see little Frankie. I got to go see that child that I already loved and adored. I got to see him. And I got to see that he was even going to look like his daddy. I could even tell that. I mean, these, these ultrasounds, 4D, 3D ultrasounds, are absolutely amazing to look in the womb. Okay, a woman who is five months pregnant, guess what? The polling shows that the public is with us on this. They don't think you should have an abortion after then. Hispanics are very pro-life. They're very much in favor of the 20-week ban. Women are very much in favor of the 20-week ban. And the most encouraging thing are young people. They are in favor of the 20-week ban. So this horrific thing with Kermit Gosnell and these other clinics around the country, they gave us momentum in this pro-life movement. Uh, don't tell my mother, but I lobby on Capitol Hill. I got to lobby on the 20-week ban before Congress, and the sponsor of the bill, uh, Steve King, I talked to Steve on the way to the airport yesterday. He's not the sponsor, he was a co-sponsor. But Steve worked hard on that, and Trent Franks from Arizona was the prime sponsor. And uh, my husband and I are very close to both of them and their wives. But anyway, I don't know if you know how historic it was when that bill was voted upon in the House of Representatives and passed overwhelmingly. Now many people will say, well, what about the Senate? Okay, remember the tenacity of the liberals? Remember the tenacity of the left? You know how they keep taking ground inch by inch? We have to be tenacious. We have to keep working. We don't give up after we make some progress. We keep going on. Well, in the, the debate on the 20-week uh, ban in the House of Representatives, something very historic happened. The person that was in the chair, Ileana ross Layton, a pro-life woman from Florida. The person handling the rule, Virginia Fox from South Carolina. The person leading the debate, Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee. Always before the pro-life men, the heroes that I love, they were up there defending life. And you know what the pro-abortion left said? What do you men know about it? You know, what do you know about being pregnant? What do you know about women's rights and what they should have? And so this time, we were answering the pro-abortion women with the pro-life women. And it was a historic moment because women have a unique voice on this. The pro-abortion men have always shoved their pro-abortion ladies to the front. Well, now the pro-life women are leading the debate in Congress. And you know what? We have a Senate sponsor because of the government shutdown. Nothing has been announced. But we are going to get a vote on this in the Senate one way or the other. And I tell you, Mary Landrieu, uh, Kay Hagan, senators who are serving in pro-life states that are pro-abortion that won't even support a ban on abortion after the fifth month of pregnancy are going to be held accountable in their states. 
and you know when you think about it, you just want to get them on record. And some people will tell you, oh, the pro-life issue isn't winning politically. Let me tell you, the pro-life niche is a very important part of victory. And not only that, not only can you get Republicans, there still are pro-life Democrats, as Howie said, the party has completely left it, but there still are pro-life Democrats out there, and there certainly are pro-life independents or unaffiliated, as we call them in Colorado. So it's our job to inform them exactly where the candidates stand on those issues, especially the pro-abortion incumbents. You know, politics gets very interesting. Well, guess what's happening in Albuquerque, New Mexico, also known as the late term abortion capital in the United States. There is a city council that has voted five to four to put forth a ballot initiative. No, and this ballot initiative <laughs> would ban abortion in Albuquerque, New Mexico after the fifth month of pregnancy. Wow, I think local office is important or not. So on November 19th, the people in Albuquerque will get to decide whether or not to ban abortion after 20 weeks. An amazing thing. I mean, I started out my political career on the local school board, and you just never want to underestimate the value of a locally elected official. And, and the importance of that thing in Albuquerque, that could be the spark, that could be the fire for city councils and county commissioners around this country saying we are banning abortion after five months in our community, in our county. So I'm very excited about that. You know, we at Susan B. Anthony List have started a pro-life women's caucus now at the state level. I remember when I carried a right to know bill in Colorado, I kind of felt like I was all by myself. There wasn't a great organization like Cornerstone to come in and help me. <laughs> There wasn't a great organization there to support me and help me. There wasn't anything like the Charlotte Lozier Institute, which is our research arm at Susan B. Anthony List that was helping me with statistics, talking about the breast cancer connection to abortion, uh, the, the, the absolute need for a woman to be fully informed medically before she underwent this procedure. But I did it uh, even with uh, a Republican majority in the House. We still couldn't pass it. But I want to tell you that this pro-life women's caucus will fill the void that I felt when I was in the State House and State Senate in Colorado. We're excited about gathering pro-life women uh, in legislatures from around the country. We want to equip them with good information. We want to help them. Uh, you know, in Colorado, and I understand it's the same way in New Hampshire, you know, well, we got paid a little more. We got 17.5 for crying out loud. But yeah, that's a lot of money compared to $100. But it really was a financial sacrifice to serve. We didn't have money for staff. And we really believe at Susan B. Anthony List that we can help these women. We can give the resources, give them the resources they, that they need to lead on the life issue around the country. And I tell you, there is nothing so powerful. I, I admire so many men that are in elected office, but I tell you, there is something about a woman who still sees her identity with her family. She's not looking for a title to make her feel important or needed. And she can fight the conservative fight and give it all she got. she's got. And when she's done, she says, OK, on to the next one. I mean, there's something about a conservative woman that is incredibly compelling. And, and we want to uh, give these women encouragement as they work for life. <laughs> And I have to say, women at Cornerstone right here, Ashley Pratt, Anne-Marie Banfield, Ellen Cole, yes. we appreciate you so much as you work on the You know, when you come into a state like New Hampshire, I know that there are many obstacles to be overcome before we elect conservatives, before we elect pro-life leaders, but you never want to uh, look over appreciating and valuing the ones that you have. And as I come, you know, Susan B. Anthony List is all about electing women and electing men who are running against pro-abortion women. But we want to value the ones that are in office now and encourage them. I, I was privileged to have breakfast this morning uh, with a couple of your state legislators. 
Um, and I also have talked to Mary Linda Garcia, uh, Jane Cormier, but I had breakfast with Janine Nodder and Lynette Peterson this morning, and I was privileged to do that. And I want to tell you that Susan B. Anthony List is the political arm of the pro-life movement. We feel like we have work to do all over the country, but we want to work with Cornerstone. Uh, we want to work with citizens. We want to work with you to make sure that New Hampshire becomes a more conservative state. And, and we have so much to do, but I believe that each one of us has more resources than we even realize. And I just want to encourage you today as as Woody Allen would say, to show up and do your part, and we're going to be here with you. Thank you very much. Clock tea.